G'day guys, it's Wednesday afternoon here in Melbourne and it is as cold as a mother-in-law's kiss and uh, rugged up, I'm rugged up and getting ready, getting ready for Friday night, getting ready for Friday night, going to be cold at the MCG. When I think about, when I think about this game during the week and look at those, look at those images there, that montage of images there. This was, this, this was our football club at its lowest ebb, I reckon. And I know, I know there's some great people there, Soss and, and Chris Judd, and, but Jesus Christ, we were a basket case. And even, this was, a, this was a few years ago now, and the guy who we wined and dined, who we wanted to wine and dine, and really made fools of ourselves, really, and I know we've probably dodged a bullet, but he plays. He plays on Friday night against us, Dylan Shield. And this was our basket case of a football club. And only, only eight months ago, we were a basket case. We were a basket case. So to me, to me, it's still raw, still raw. I can still smell it, the stench coming out of Princess Park, our home ground. I can taste it. I can taste it. Um, and I know we take black, well, I don't, I don't. But I know a lot of Carlton supporters, and I don't like incident. don't get me wrong, I don't like him. I don't like him. I don't like him. In fact, I don't really like any other club. But there's a lot of Carlton supporters out there who've taken great pleasure in seeing Essendon regress the way they have this year after making finals last year. Fuck, this is an embarrassing loss if we don't get the job done on Friday night. And a lot of those supporters have gone really, really hard at Essendon supporters and the Essendon Football Club. Fuck, you're probably going to go and crawl back under your doona, to be perfectly honest, if we don't get the chocolates on Friday night. Um, and this is a test, really. This is a test of how far we have come, really. How far or how far we think we have come. Now, I think we have come a long way in that time. Jeez, as I mentioned, you don't want to be dropping this one, considering, considering, considering some of the stuff is, considering it. Um, and let's not get ahead of ourselves, really. And this is why, this is why I can still taste this shit from our football club. We really, we really, okay, we really have not achieved anything yet. Anything yet. Um, and as much as I like to see guys like Caleb Marchbank come back and play a game after not playing since 1954 and the feel-good little videos we get from the football club, as long as we see that makes us feel good, okay, makes us feel good, fuck, let's not drop this game. Let's not drop this game against Essendon, 7th v 16th. And I hear Essendon supporters going hard at their football club, and that was us this time last year. So let's not forget that. Let's not forget that. 7th v 16th, both teams coming off the bye. A win for us could potentially, potentially see us jump back into the top four and give us some breathing space. If we win, if we win, and Brisbane beat, I think I'm getting this right, Brisbane beat the Saints at the Gabba on Saturday night. That will give us just some breathing space, I reckon. For the time being... Well, a loss, we don't want to think about a loss. We don't want to think about a loss puts us under immense pressure in some dangerous, dangerous territory with a tough patch of games coming up. Imagine dropping two games against arch rivals, games we are expected to win at the MCG, the home of football on a Friday night. Make no mistake, the pressure will come. Two wins, nine losses for the Bombrays. It's been an awful season after they played finals last year and they got their pants pulled down by the Western Bulldogs in that final. But big things were expected of them. Big things internally, I reckon, were expected of them. Not to mention externally. They've been against the Crows and the Hawks, both at Marvel Stadium. They kicked 100 points under the roof. Always been flat track bullies there. Always been. Flat track bullies. They love Marvel Stadium. 
And they've had some losses, a lot of them, nine in fact, but they've played the best sides in the competition the way it's panned out in the first half of the season. Geelong, 66 points, round one. Okay? They smashed them. Brisbane got them by 22. I think that was at the Gabba, that game. Melbourne got them by 29. Fremantle by 48. Okay, smacked them. That was at Marvel Stadium. Collingwood by 10 on Anzac Day. Bulldogs by 32. Swanee smacked them by 58 at the SCG. Richmond by 32 and Port Adelaide 16. And that was probably their best performance for some time, the last game before the bye against Port Adelaide at the Adelaide Oval. And they were okay. They were plucky after halftime in the wet. They really were. They had a dip and they really did. That They stripped it back. Brett Rutten and the coaching staff said they wanted to strip it right back and get back to the defensive actions um, that they wanted to be defined by. And they were okay. They weren't great, but they were okay. And they were right in that game up until three-quarter time. And uh, upset looked like it was on the card. So they don't come into this game um, with with their tail between their legs. They probably come into this game feeling like their best footy is in front of them. And that makes this a very, very dangerous game. Changes. Great to see Caleb Marchbank back. I said that. Hasn't played since 1953. It's great to see him back. But what sort of preparation has he had, really? Three quarters in the VFL against Frankston. Came off. Managed time. Then was injured the following week. Then missed the Northern Blue game. So he's probably had about four, four quarters of football. Maybe five. Um, let's see how he goes. He comes in for Weedering. We know Weedering's out. Huge loss with that shoulder injury. And what is the story with Harry? They said six weeks. They said six weeks. I'm sure the club said six weeks for that meniscus tear. He had surgery on May the 12th, and it's now June the 8th. And round eight was the last game he played against the Crows. So that's a really, really quick turnaround if he plays. And it's a huge in. If he's ready to go, he comes in. That is a huge in for us. Um, We just know how dangerous that combination is. And and can really, can that Essendon defence really hold those two? It'd have to be pissing down with rain. Pissing down with rain for Essendon to have any chance really to hold Charlie, Jack Silvani and Harry um, in that same forward line. So that will be a big in for us. Kennedy must come back in. He must come back in. Uh, missed the game against Collingwood through soreness. Should return. Wanting the return, does that make Paddy Dow vulnerable? I would think so. Not that I want Dow out necessarily. You would like to see him get another opportunity, but I just think it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a clear swap. Um, Dow's playing the role that Kennedy does inside midfielder and I think Kennedy does it better um, he's marking around the ground is elite and uh, I think he plays his reasonable football at the MCG as well Matthew Kennedy is a very important player for us Jack Martin does he come in I think he does I think they'll make I think young Motlop might, might go out I think it's probably time um, Jack Martin had that game in the VFL before the bye after missing games against the Giants and Sydney, so missed those two really good wins. Played in the VFL, obviously, against the Bullants. I think he played. It was okay. I think he comes in. Um, what happens to our mid-season draft picks? Durden probably doesn't come in now, considering March Banks in. Does Will Hayes come in? That's an interesting one, but he hasn't played for a couple of weeks either. So I'd say probably no in this game. Um, Carroll, medical sub, probably goes out. Nunes, Motlop, Cottrell, Stocker. Quietish games against the Pies. Who's vulnerable from that quartet? Sam Philp also pressing, probably won't come in. No Kemp. No need for Kemp, considering March Bank comes in. Um, the Bombers will get back Stringer, which is huge for them. And he's good fresh. Jake Stringer is good fresh. I reckon he's really good fresh, and they bring back Guelphie. Who's a goer? Guelphie's a goer. Loves to tackle. Um, but that looks like they might lose Andrew McGrath who apparently did some sort of soft tissue injury early in the week at training, and he'll be assessed later on in the week. Teams will be out tomorrow. Friday night games, the teams will be out tomorrow. So we'll get a better understanding then who's in and who's out. Um, And the Bombers, as I mentioned, really did strip back. They stripped back 
exactly the way, way they want to play and expect a really hard and ferocious game tomorrow at the MCG. Things I don't want to see. I, I, I'd love to see us start really well. I mean, that, that, that in a perfect world, have a blistering start is fantastic. But what I don't want to see is a blistering start followed by a significant period of absolute poo. We lose all momentum and let the opposition back into the game. That seemed to be a, a bit of a consistent trend throughout this year um, in our games. Uh, so that's something I'll be looking out for is that we get that blistering start, whether it's the first quarter or some time in the second quarter. We're all going to be worried about whether we can just at least hold tough. Just hold tough. Okay, we're not asking to play that ballistic style of football okay, for 120 minutes. We're just asking to hold tough and find a way not to let the opposition get big run-ons. Um, I don't think he'll play, but a player that I think may worry us in their front half, not so much Harry Jones or 2 meter Peter, we'll get to those in a minute, but someone like Alec Waterman, um, this is the difficult matchup. And he's the type of player that will come out and play well against us. He kicked four on Anzac Day against the Pies. And uh, he's uh, he's done a number on us in a practice game uh, before he got his opportunity at Essendon. Uh, back a couple of years ago now, he's played, uh, I think he's played the seven games this year, kicked 10 goals, four. Um, he's only kicked two goals from his last three games. We'll probably get dropped. Um, but he's the type of player that can give us headaches. Just imagine those big, big, big legs of Alec Waterman and that power, power coming out of the goal square and he kicks straight. He does kick straight. We know, we know the impact of their midfield. We know they've got Merritt, Parrish, Gill, McGrath, Corbell. Does it match up really when you think of pound for pound against Cripps, Walsh, Hewitt, Jared Kennedy? No, it doesn't. We know Merritt and Parrish rack up huge numbers. Are those numbers damaging? Do they change the way they play in that regard? Can they get forward, get a lot of their possessions in the front half um, of the ground, which will make them a lot more dangerous? Um, but what we don't want to see, really, and I mentioned this before with this shit, with this shit, I know we dodged a billet, bullet not getting D Dylan Shield, but I know a lot of Carlton supporters hang a lot of shit on him. Um, and what were we going to pay him? Something like a million dollars a year or something. And we... Pfft. He's averaged less than 20 disposals a game this year. Um, and he's kicked one goal for the season. Uh, Dylan Shield. So if he comes out this week and the Bombers get the job done and he plays his best game for the season, um, I'm cracking some skulls. I really am. And it's going to make a lot of people, a lot of people really embarrassed if that's the case. Uh, and yeah, it's a great opportunity for, for Dylan Shield. It really is. Um, to have a big game. Have a big game. Uh, not that I want him to, but it is dangerous. 150 year celebration as well for the Bombers. Let's spoil it. I think we did the same against Collingwood a few years back. Um, we spoiled their party. Uh, Andrew Phillips, the former blue. Um, big red. He's a goer. He's an honest battler. Andrew Phillips, him and Sam Draper. They love it in and hard and tough. Um, up against DDK. I don't know. It's something about Andrew Phillips in the wet at the MCG. I don't know. I'm not saying it worries me, but you can just picture him. Picture him taking a mark inside Ford 50 and he's a good kick for goal. I don't want to see that. <laughs> I don't want to see that. I don't want to see Nick Hine bursting off the back flank. I don't want to see it. He was good against Port Adelaide. He had 27 or 28 touches. And I know, we know Adam Sard is the Probably the best halfback flanker in the competition at the moment is having a superb year, but Jesus Christ, we don't want to see that considering the banner that goes on between those two. Um, and I mentioned Dev Two Meter Peter, who plays on him. Um, he, he's dangerous in the air, he's big and he's dangerous and he can kick for goals. So that's a big job for Lewis Young. Uh, I don't think Marchie takes him. Um, that would be a big job for Lewis Young. You would probably expect Marchbank to go to Harrison Jones. He's played a, again, a, played quite well against us in the past. And just one quick one. 
Can't let that fucking Devin Smith get in the noses, in the faces, sorry, of our players. Let's not let it happen. Let's hammer him, hammer him early. Just rub him into the dirt. Again, don't give him any opportunity to get in the game. He thinks he's a bit of a barometer for the Bombers, okay, from a physicality point of view. Let's not, let's not, let it's, let's not get to the fourth quarter and have Devin Smith and the Bombers up and him running around, okay? Nah, nah, it's not going to happen. Okay, I like their young players. Perkins, gun, really good player. Hobbs, really good player. Reed is going to be good. Nick Martin's been a revelation. He's been spoken about a lot. He needs to be a watch. He is a class act. Harrison Jones mentioned him. And young Durham, Sam, is a good young player as well. So they've got some youngsters running around down back. They really are a little bit small. They really are. Laverde, undersized. Ridley, good player. Um, intercept player. Can they go? Can they go with our big boys? I don't think they can. They really do miss. And and this this... Makes me feel good. They they miss Tip and Woody, and they miss Snelling in their front half. Just their ferocity, particularly McDonald, Tip and Woody. Um, and in the wet and in the difficult conditions at the MCG, he'd be an absolute nightmare. Um, and he's caused us headaches in the past, and he's no longer there. Um, big night for the footy club, this. Big, big night for the footy club. Um I just don't want the ramifications of a loss. I'm confident we'll get the job done. I really am. I'm confident we'll get the job done. Um, but Jesus Christ, we'd want to. We'd want to. Yeah. It might be, this won't be a good one for us if we let it slip. Speak to you soon.